Well, it happened. I bought another 3D printer. I don't have enough electrical outlets in the garage, so one has to go in the office. The problem is the fumes. Nobody likes to inhale plastic, especially while they're working. So I got to thinking about ways to solve that. Uh, I don't want to do a full bulky enclosure because I kind of like to watch stuff print as it goes. So what inspired me were those like little itty bitty uh, fume exhaust hoods on stoves where they just have enough powerful airflow to suck the air from your food as it's cooking. I thought maybe I can do something similar, but for my desk. The problem is where do I get off the shelf equipment that would solve this problem for me? Um, I looked around my house for a little while until I found my dryer. Cause you know, in the back of your dryer, there's that little aluminum hose that goes outside to spit out the humid air. And that was the Eureka moment. I can get that stuff at Home Depot. Cool, so now we've got the tubing covered, but how are we actually gonna pull the air? We need some sort of inline fan. Okay, it turns out this is a really common problem. Like the exhaust fan in your bathroom or for greenhouses, there are tons of generically available four inch hose fan units that you just put in line. So I can just go pick one out on Amazon and we've got that problem solved too. Okay, so then the last thing is just how are we gonna mount it to my desk and how are we gonna make sure that the air we're pulling in is from my 3D printer? So my first thought is basically like a tuba, a big horn attached to the edge of my desk. And the only really technical requirement for it is that it ends in a four inch tube that I can attach to a generic dryer hose. That means it's time to do some CAD. All right, before we head off to the 3D printer, let's hop into AR to review the design. In the front here, I've got that gently curved surface that I'm hoping will draw in air from the 3D printer. Uh, down here, I have a flat section that I'm hoping I can use a clamp with to secure it to my desk. And then in the back here, I've got these little notches where I'm hoping I can use a hose clamp to secure the motor to the rest of the tuba unit. All right, let's print it. One more thing. To prevent debris from falling into the fan, I also designed this tiny little mesh disc to sit on top of the motor unit inside of the tuba, just as a little bit of extra protection. But this is something I should have thought about earlier. Well, here we are. This is the first prototype fully assembled. We have the intake cone printed in gray PET G, the tiny little grating in there to prevent stuff from falling into the fan. And then out of the cone, we go into the little inline accelerator and then through some four inch aluminum ducting outside. So to actually test whether or not it's working, I'm gonna use a scented candle. So I've got a little scented candle down here. And if this is working well, I'm thinking I shouldn't really be able to smell it. And so far, that's true, but when I blow it out and we see the smoke rise off, uh, that'll be the real test because it should get sucked right out the window. So on the outside here, I have one of these dryer vents with the flaps that close when there's no airflow. So I've got the fan running inside. And as you can see, the flaps, I can't quite like lift it fully vertically, but about 45 degrees. And putting my hand here, I can confirm that there's actually a surprising amount of airflow coming out of this thing. Also, I can smell my scented, scented candle super clearly, which means that it's working. So I just blew out my scented candle after running it for about a half an hour. And the scent is significantly reduced. I'm not gonna lie to you though, it's still in the room, so it's not perfect. 
But if I had to be unscientific about it, I'd say that I reduced the intensity of the candle's smell by about 60%. Good enough. So like with all good engineering, iteration is the key. And not everything on this first build went perfectly. For one, it's pretty loud. My theory is that if I put something in the center of this hole here, like a some sort of conical shape, that might help accelerate the airflow, but also make it quieter. Also, my four little uh, divots here that I could use to clamp to the hose, um, they didn't really flex enough. As you can see in the back here, the uh, housing actually cracked, so that's something to improve. Shout out to DG's 3D print on Maker World for this awesome clamp design. Uh, I will leave a link to it in the description below. All right, here we are, version two. Similar to the first one, but with a couple small improvements. On the bottom here, I've added more slices, and I've put a small bevel on the interior of this cylinder here to enable the tabs to bend a little bit more effectively so that they can grip the ventilation unit. And then on the interior of the tuba here, I've put this little notch and a slit here, and that enables you to put in inserts like this one. So. I'm hoping that this will make the cone quieter and also improve the airflow. In addition to the design changes for the 3D printed part, I've also upgraded some of the hardware I'm using. For one, I got these nice thumb adjustable hose clamps, so that way I don't have to mess around with a screwdriver when I'm installing the motor. I've also put little soft silicone feet on the base of the tuba, so that where it clamps to the desk, I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of vibration isolation to make it quieter. And then finally, I got a matte black hose, because it looks cool. Alrighty, version two is all installed. For the most part, uh, everything worked pretty well here. Most of my tabs bent really effectively to grip the motor unit. I did have some light cracking here, but much better than the first time, and certainly nothing that will impact the functionality. And then around the front here, I've got two grates to test. One is this conical one, and one is just kind of like an empty grate I will use as baseline. Let's see how these do. Just a quick sound test. So this is with the insert in, without, in, without, in. <laughs> so, what's the result? Uh, I tried blowing out the smoke a few times. I also went outside and stood next to the grate and asked my wife to pull in and out this conical insert. It does make it a lot quieter, but it restricts the airflow a little too much. I don't know if that's just because this mass is too large or my grating is too fine. More experimentation needed, but good thing that the inserts are hot swappable now. A quick note on these little silicone feet. Honestly, I can't tell the difference with them on or off. I think that they're not really necessary in the end. However, even though the vibration wasn't reduced, uh, it is absolutely rock solid and will not go anywhere, so eh, optional. All right, Bamboo users are probably asking about the purge bucket. For those who don't know, when these printers change colors, they have to purge all of the existing color from the tool head, and they do that by spitting it out on the left. Uh, these little pellets here. Most of us choose to collect these in a bucket that just kind of sits here. The problem is, is that these buckets typically have solid back walls, which restricts airflow to the tuba. So I quickly designed a new one with holes in it so that the airflow can move through unrestricted. So a quick note about warping, because I know some of you are going to be thinking about this. I have done quite a few prints at this point, as you can see in the purge bucket. And I've also tried printing some of these warping torture tests. Uh, shout out to Extrudum on printables for this model. I have not had any significant issues so far. I think at this distance, the airflow is diffuse enough that it's not impacting the part cooling in a way that would cause any warping issues. Well, I would call that a success. The tuba gives me enough extra ventilation that I don't feel too guilty having a 3D printer in my office. Let's call it for today. It's already a pretty long video. If you have any ideas about how this could be improved, I'd love to hear from you. All of the step files and STLs are available on my account on Maker World. 
So if you want to do some mods, if you want to design your own custom insert, please do and share it. Let us know how it goes. What is it that uh, all the cool YouTubers say at the end of their videos? Uh, something about liking and subscribing? I don't know. This is my first one. I might do it again.